Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabassi. And with us is Blackhawks alternate captain and forward Nick Felino. And our segment with Nick is presented by Shift Hockey. Go to shifthockey.com and use the code CHGO for 10% off your next stick. Nick, thanks for being with us, man. We appreciate it. A little bit for me. Appreciate it, guys. Sorry, we're, we're flexible. Yeah, Not yeah, actually sorry. flexible, but time wise, <laughs> we are flexible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got to talk about, we're going to start right off, man. The goal last night, the, the spinorama, oh, a tribute to Dennis Savard. <laughs> yeah, is that what you had in mind did, when you... Did Savi uh, yeah. text you after the game? Say, <laughs> no, hey, I would have liked a, a text from Savi. That would have been nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen guys do it. I think I've done it one other time. Um, but just threw it on net. We didn't have a lot going in that game, so it was just nice to kind of get one and get us rolling a little bit. But, um, yeah, it was a good play. Just... One of the first sustained four checks we really had where we got the puck back. And, um, yeah, it was nice to be able to make it count. But, yeah, that game was a little frustrating last night, just the way we started. And then you could see the urgency kind of coming at the end of the game, and, and we started to take over. But, you know, in, in this league, it's too little too late sometimes. Yeah, that urgency is is something that I think we've we've heard uh, you guys talk about starting the game with and, and, and everything. But as as far as, you know, getting it ramped up late later in the game how do you guys try and like spin that into the next game you know take that momentum from one game to the other where yeah you didn't get the win and maybe halfway through the game things started you know the wheel started spinning but how do you keep that spinning to the next game yeah I think that's the message is like look what we can do against a really good team when we have that compete that mindset that understanding of of how we need to play and and just a and just a battle level, you know, really, that's all it came down to. I just You look at Carolina, they're a really aggressive team, almost too aggressive. If you actually can, you know, play smartly against them and negate some of that, you, you're going to give yourself a lot of chances to score. And we could see that a lot. You know, they're, they were getting over aggressive, taking some penalties, and then we get to capitalize on the power play. So you have that from the get-go, and now you're in a game against a really good team, and now your confidence starts to grow because of that. So I'm hoping that the guys saw that after the second period where we, we just came into the third. We didn't think... We just we just played, and it played into our hands. Guys got to feel more free. We we looked less lethargic, more engaged, uh, more aggressive, and you know it's unfortunate you don't give yourself a real good chance to win a hockey game. But take that into a team like Philly, who's playing like that. They're playing really aggressive. They're playing, uh, you know, free. So we have to have that mindset and understanding that we can do it. And when we do it, we have success and, um, and more guys will pile in on the scoring and all that as, as more guys understand that part of it. And, and that's the message you're just trying to hammer home. I, I talked about that last night. I, I'm not a moral victory guy, <laughs> um, but there are lessons this year that we're going to have to just learn and, and, and be proud as we tick off those uh, as the season goes along here. And, and hopefully that's one that we can kind of hammer home this next little bit. Well, you kind of, you mentioned it post game that, Maybe there's a little bit of hesitancy and I don't know if it's fear, but with so many young guys and inexperienced guys and also guys kind of playing out of their comfort zones a little bit, it's it's not – it's almost like tentative. Like I don't want to make a mistake, so it's that extra thought where maybe your instincts are to do this, but you you take that moment of hesitation. It, it feels like you've been seeing a little bit of that in these games. Yeah, and that's human nature. Listen, nobody wants to make a mistake and you, you want to be the – the reason why we're having success, not the reason why maybe it's not going the right way. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, and, and talking last night, it's like we are where we are in the standings. So what are you really afraid of at this point? Like it, We've already kind of been in this situation where we're, we're clawing our way out of the basement. So ultimately, I'd rather see guys just go for it. And not, not recklessly, but I want to see guys, like, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to be a part of this, that what we're trying to do here? How bad do you just want to play well for your, I mean, if it's selfish, like if it's your own good that you want to, you know, there's, there's something to that. You have to have a little bit of selfishness in, in the NHL in order to be successful. So all those wrapped in it, it, it shouldn't be a fear-based thought process. It should be a, an opportunity-based thought process. And I think that's what we're trying to switch right now is like, you know, yeah, you can be fearful. I don't want to make a mistake, but man, we're at the point where, We've already made enough mistakes this year, and, and we're in the position we're in. So let's go and be an engaged hockey team. Let's go be in a competitive hockey team. Let's go be a, a real hard team to play against. And if you have that mindset, it's amazing how the tide starts to turn all of a sudden now. And listen, we're playing against teams that are fighting for their playoff lives, so we're not going to get an easy game, and we can't expect that, and we can't expect their teams are just going to roll over on us. So we have to have that mindset and that compete. And, and if you have that where you're not afraid to make mistakes, it's amazing how your game almost starts to come to you. 
When you have a, a second period like last night where it seems that Carolina just had the puck for almost mm-hmm. the entire period and it, I know the like frustration must build. We, we hear a lot like, we just go hit them and take the puck yeah. and we know it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah. But how important is it when you're having a period like that or a stretch to like stay within the structure? Because if you go chasing hits, usually it ends up in the back of your own net. Yeah. So how important is it to like, especially for the young guys, like just stay within the structure, it will come back to us. It's human nature when things aren't going well. You feel like you haven't done any, especially, you know, for offensive guys where you feel like you haven't touched the puck and you're playing defense, you, you open yourself up like you talk about because you're like, all right, I'm going to go get a hit or I'm going to go cheat this and try to, you know, pick a pocket here on the wrong side of the po- of the play. And, and you know, when things are going well, sometimes that works, but it's amazing how many times it comes to bite you in the ass. And and that's the the battle we have to have right now. It's I really want to make this this last play, but I should probably chip it in or put it in an area where we can get it back and go change so my linemate can come in and have success and an opportunity to be successful instead of he's now chasing the back check and now he's tired, he can't do anything offensively. So it's those those ebbs and flows in the game that we have to get better at. And it's definitely hard. It's it's human nature where you just you, you wanna you wanna do more when you feel like you haven't done enough. But if you stay within the structure, it is amazing how the game just comes to you. And you know, we have things in place and, and Luke's put things in place that if, if we if we are all on the same page, it's amazing how quickly we break out, how fast we are out of the, in the neutral zone. And then all of a sudden now we're the ones running around in the offensive zone with the team's trying to catch us. Right. And you saw a couple of those shifts last game. So it's just the the understanding and, and the, the value that we have to put into that. And, and I get it, though. There's, you know, there's parts in the games where teams do have that push, but that's going to happen. It's it's all about momentum in, in the NHL. And how, how fast you lose it, how quickly you get it back. And you're not going to get it back by individual efforts or guys not being on the same page. It's by the structure and, and, and what you're doing as a team. And, and we need to value that a little bit more and see the results from that. And, you know, last night there was a lot of – maybe didn't score, but they drew, we drew a penalty. We got an opportunity in the power play. Or you live to fight another day and have an opportunity for your next line to go out there and score a goal maybe because they have the energy to go and play in the, in the offensive zone while that line's tired that they're playing against. So – those are the little things in the game we have to value and respect a little bit more. Some positivity that we've seen in the, in the last couple of games uh, has been, you know, Connor Bedard's return to the lineup and kind of the, the chemistry that uh, he and Philip Kirsch have, have, have played with over the last couple of games and, and, and with you as well. Like you guys have been, have been clicking. What have you seen since, uh, since Connor's come back and, and since, uh, you know, him and Philip have been playing together? I see that Connor's playing at a different speed level right now. You know, I find his his game is is you know he's darting in holes. He's playing underneath the puck a little bit better. So I, I noticed that and, and right away when he kind of came in, it's just that the level of speed that he's playing at. He's not trying to slow the game down. He's actually now you know accelerating it a little bit, and it's it's nice to see because I think he he probably realized that when you know he's so much to process in the first half of the season before he got hurt, and you know he's so used to being able to kind of put the game at whatever speed he wants to put it at. And I think now he's realizing, no, I can go. And I have the opportunity and the abilities to play at that level, at that speed level. And, you know, that's what I've noticed. Him and Kirsch now are, are playing at a high level and, you know, understanding each other. And, and you're seeing those little plays or the little five-foot passes. They're not trying to make the long pass or, you know, the really cute one and cross seam. It's it's almost these five, five ten-foot passes that now they're generating a lot more speed and a lot more opportunities for themselves. And it's fun to watch. I mean, I, I'm out there with them. And you try to do the dirty work around the net and – I've uh, been rewarded for it, but it's uh, it's great to see the confidence that he's come back with. He's put the work in. Uh, you know, you could everyone we talked about it. It was almost annoying uh, how how much <laughs> he was on the ice. You know, and um, and you just wanted to make sure he was being smart and safe. But you know, he's a kid that wants it. He wants to be a difference maker. He wants to be the best, and he's going to drive a lot of what we're trying to do here. And it's it's great to see him find some chemistry with Kirsch, and and as a line, we've been able to generate a lot. And you've been, you know, the, the beneficiary of, of, of him coming back as well. Yeah. You've also been the beneficiary of the CHGO bump. I believe it's five goals and eight points since uh, yeah. wearing the CHGO oh. sweater <laughs> yeah, you're over, over the last 10 <laughs> games. And, yeah. you know, the finger looks like it's, it's yeah, back, back, back healed. We're, so, we're you know, moving. you're welcome for the, uh, for yeah, the bump you know and what? the healing Thanks, powers. CHGO. That is true. I forgot I wore that. That's a nice little... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, we, we didn't wear that every day. Yeah. 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 We, yeah, we, we, we might have didn't. put that picture everywhere we could, <laughs> along with the link of where you could it. buy that hoodie. <laughs> I love it. That looks good. Uh, it's a very comfortable hoodie, by the way. It's, so it's a real thing. Doesn't have one, you we went one. to Rockford last weekend for the Corey Crawford uh, retirement ceremony. We walk in the building. They're on a seven-game losing streak. We're there. They win. They go on a three-game winning streak. Like it's a, the CHO bump is a real thing. Yeah, don't don't mind last night. That, 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 we weren't there. We weren't there. We weren't there. It was oh, a yeah. road game. We weren't there. We were we were here. And yeah. uh, so yeah, feel free if anybody's on a scoring slump, send them on over. <laughs> yeah, we'll put them you on the show. A, we'll, we'll and get all you all guys sudden. lining up the door here. To, I'm gonna have to bring a bunch of CHO sweatshirts and that's but, fine. But, uh, <laughs> we'll take it. We'll get, take anything right now. Getting back to counter real quickly. It just could you say? Obviously, nobody wanted to see him get hurt and miss a month of the season. But could you say that might be a blessing in disguise, or that time away? Kind of because I've noticed in the last couple games he's he's got some new tricks up his sleeve. He seems to be finding open spots on the ice a lot easier than he was before. You know the great ones always seem to do that. Yeah. Like where you're like, how could you leave him wide open? He's but they always seem to do it. We saw Crosby do it the other night. Do you think he's kind of he used that time to kind of be like, all right, now that I'm removed from it, I can see things that I need to do better. Yeah, I mean, listen, any 18 year old that's going to have that kind of a window and use it properly is going to benefit, right? And, and I think he did. I think he realized, okay, I'm faced with this adversity. I can handle it one of two ways, and I'm going to go the way of, of trying to make myself better. And Okay, where are the areas I can improve in? What are the things I can do that when I get back, I hit the ground running? And I respect him so much for that because sometimes you, you guys take a breath when you're injured, and it's like, okay. And then they, they're not quite up to speed when the time comes to get back or the injury lasts a little longer. He was so committed he was almost like convincing himself he wasn't injured, you know, and it was it was hilarious at some points. But, <laughs> um, you know, he's like, I don't even think I'm injured anymore. I'm like, man, you're pretty injured. I saw your x-ray. Like, you got to give it some time. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's what makes him so elite, and I respect him so much for that because, you know, he's come back in a difficult situation and, and, and almost like he's pissed off, you know, that it happened. And you could see it. He's using that, his motivation to, to you know, I think he's – whether personal accolades or not, I don't think he's a guy that really thinks about that, but I think he's, he's wants to show like, I am the best rookie in the league. I am the best player in this league. And um, we're benefiting from that mindset. And I, I, I hope it rubs off on a lot more guys that that's the attitude you have to have, whether you're Connor Bedard or a role player, you know, you have to have that mindset that you have something to prove each and every night you step on the ice. And Connor does that every night. There's an expectation already on him. But he still feels like he has something to prove every night, he's, and, and, it's, and it benefits us, and it benefits him. And you're seeing a really motivated hockey player right now. Motivated is a is a word for it. He also is, it looks like he's a little fired up. Like he's been yeah. chirping a little more, yeah. and he's been more physical. And he's we, we talked to him today after practice, and he said like getting into the game early by laying a hit here or there gets him gets him into the game. But you're right, he looks like he is playing with something to prove. Yeah, and I don't know if he's. When he's out, he's reading things about how, oh, the Calder race is closing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no. No, 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 no forget that. No, it's I think he's laid that to rest or will <laughs> continue. But I think, yeah, any player, an engaged hockey player, an engaged athlete is uh, so much more dangerous than, a, you know, one that's just going to go by skill or, you know, work ethic that's just not right but quite there. And I think one thing that Connor doesn't lack is a work ethic. So, uh, now that he's engaged and understands how he can impact games, even when he's not maybe scoring right away, um, I think it allows him then, as the game goes on, to get his you know points in or his abilities to, to put himself in a position to score. And you're seeing that on a nightly basis right now. Well, we saw it last night in the game in the goal that was oh. called offsides. Yeah. Uh, but after he scored, you know, him and him and Spencer Martin were kind of. You know, yeah, going back I and forth it. at the end of the second period, and then he's you know he scores in the third period and stares him down. Like you see, to to see a eighteen year old kid like that come in and have that confidence to be it, kind of, it seems like a, a self awareness of like I know I can take over this league, and and you're gonna have to try and stop me. Like how how much is that? Do you feel like has has just come come through in the, in the couple of days that he's been back from injury? Like you were talking about, like yeah. taking that breath and, and taking that game taking the game in from a, from a distance and then coming back to it with now knowing he can kind of like put his foot down on the pedal and, yeah. and, and go. No, that's what I think I appreciate about him is that he is such a competitor that way. And I think he's realizing he can impact games, whether it's through his attitude or his abilities. Like he, he, he can will himself and our team to, to success. And, 
you know, and I think more guys jump on board when they see that. So it's nice to have a young player. A lot of times, you know, you're harping on those things. And when you have a kid that just naturally does it, and especially the time off, I think it's, it's magnified it a little bit more even. Um, you know, it helps. It helps drive the bus for the team. And he's done that. And whether it's an attitude, and I think all the greats do. Everyone I played against, they have a swagger. They have this, this um, you know, way about them that, like, I'm the best. They don't have to say it. But the way they act on the ice, they don't let you get an upper hand. They don't, you know, like they're, they're going to let you know. Um, they, they border arrogant and cocky, you know, and, and it's, but it works. And it's, uh, it's something that I love and admire about great players. And, um, it, you know, it's part of why you love to go against them uh, to see if you can shut that down. But when you have one on your team, it's about pulling that out more and, and making sure he feels like he can be that man and have that swagger and uh, we're going to benefit from it. We've got a lot more with Nick Foligno coming up. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash that like button for us. We'd appreciate that. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube page as well. But we want to thank our sponsor of Nick's appearance here on CHGO Blackhawk Shift Hockey. Shift is bringing the professional custom stick experience to organizations across Chicagoland. Give your team the opportunity to build a personalized elite stick for a fraction of the cost. Plus, you can work with their designers to create a fully custom stick wrap. Find out more at shifthockey.com slash teams or stop by the shop on the third floor of Johnny's Ice House and use that code CHGO for 10% off your next stick. Mario, I know you got to use your shift stick in your game yeah. on Sunday. How many Spinorama uh, roof shots did you have? <laughs> uh, zero. All right. Zero. All right. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, I first time using... Uh, the product uh, for, from from the guys at Shift, uh, they were nice enough to, to hook me up with one of their sticks that you know meets the, uh, the the specs that I've been playing with for years. And um, you know, I've I've had the same sticks for about five six years ish. Um, so I've been lucky enough that they haven't broken in that time. But I've, <laughs> I'm always worried that oh shoot, this this stick is going to break. You know, on, on you know going in for for a stick lift or anything like that. And uh, using the shift stick was the first time I've used something of that quality. And it was so light, so responsive. Um, it was awesome. Like, I, 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 I know I will get a goal in my next game using it. It <laughs> didn't, happen, didn't happen on Sunday night, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome. So, and, and the thing is, like, I was, you know, being out there, playing with it, it feels different because you're, you're you're playing with a stick like Nick would play with, right? Like where it's like if you bought that at retail, that's like three hundred and fifty dollars. But with shift, you don't have to worry about that because you're gonna get that quality at a fraction of the cost. And it makes the game and we talk about growing the game um and making it more accessible for people. That's part of what Shift does that. is like they make that some of that top quality stuff accessible to people who, you know, might not otherwise be able to get one of the top of the line yeah. pro sticks. So my um, kids have them. They love them. Yeah, yeah we yeah. got them. And they, uh, they were they, they were saying uh, great sticks. And yeah, they look pretty cool. They play for the Jets program here in town, and they got the Jets logo on the side. Yeah. They've done a pretty cool job. So yeah. the kids think they're awesome. I was I was well, when I was talking with uh, Pete at the shop. He was telling me about yeah. you know you're, you're, he showed me the 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 Jet sticks. Like it's I was just cool. like. Man, if it wasn't you know this tall, like I definitely would want one like that too. But I said, man, um, to have one of those when I was a kid would have been nice. But uh, yeah, they, they, my son scored two this weekend with it. So hey, there, there you go. go. They, they work. See, that's, see, they that's, work. That's, that's a better that's a better one than than, than me saying oh, I'll I'll eventually score. Like no, they've already they've already produced goals. Did he, did he wear a CHGO hoodie on his way into the red? <laughs> I think he did. Uh, see, there it is. See, that's what you got to do. Your yeah. next game, you got to make sure you got your hoodie on. There you go. You well, walk in the rink. That's you can get your team outfitted with the like you said the custom designed for your team shift hockey.com slash teams and get yourself a stick 10% off with the code CHGO. Um, Connor is thriving, but we saw another rookie this week who's kind of been struggling this season. Lucas Reichel gets yeah. sent to Rockford. Did you have any sort of words for him as you went to, I know it's been a really tough year for him and he's been a huge topic on this show because yeah, I know you weren't here last year, but at the end of last year, he looked great. And then this year he's really been fighting it. What can you say to a kid who's uh Headed back to Rockford kind of unexpectedly. Yeah, uh, you know, we love Lucas, and he's an outstanding player. And the thing that people need to remember, and him, him included, is there is adversity in careers. I've gone through it. Uh, there's slumps. There's, there's, you're just not quite there mentally, physically, um, for whatever reason, right? Life comes at you, and you don't, you know, it's, that's our job to navigate those things, and, and no one feels sorry for you. Um, but he's going through that right now, and he has to realize that there's, you know, 
a way of looking at this that, okay, it's adversity right now. It's hitting me. But if I handle this the right way, if I, if I find my game, I'm going to gain so many tools mentally that will help me that maybe this won't happen again, or it'll be a shorter slump or, and that's the way you have to look at it. It's an opportunity again. It's not, you know, this is, oh, the whole world's against me. This isn't fair. And the woe is me. It's all right. What can I do? What can I go down? What can I simplify? What can I uh, work on? That's, that is me that that's going to allow my game to really come out and get my confidence back. And um, so many times guys, you, you, you see it in great players. Connor McDavid, said he lost his confidence earlier this year. I don't know if you guys remember that. When mm-hmm. Edmonton was like, he's like, it feels like we can't win. So it happens to great players. No one knows why, but even great players lose confidence. And so for him, it, he can't feel like, oh, no, this is like this is only happening to me. It, it happens. But, okay, what are you doing to, to snap yourself out of it, to get out of that routine and that cycle? And, um, you know, unfortunately, it's him going down right now. But we love Lucas. And as a team, we're going to rally around him and find a way to help him become the player – that we envision him being, you know, you don't, you don't give up on guys like that. He's a great kid and, and he's a hell of a hockey player. I mean, that's one thing I didn't see him last year, but even in training camp this year, what he did. And I was like, Oh, this kid's primed to, to take off. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. A lot of things went on this year that were unforeseen in a lot of ways in our club. And, uh, and maybe he got caught in the cycle of that and wasn't able to really get himself out. But, um, you know, he's going to go down there and be a pro and learn how to be a pro even better from it. And, and he's going to gain tools and, 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 and come back a better player. I guarantee that. And so I'm excited for him. I, I think he needs to go down there with that mindset that it's an opportunity for me to grow as a player. And this is only going to help me. I'm, he's 21 years old. Yeah. And the sky's the limit. We, and I may, we failed uh, mentioning it over the last couple of weeks, but as his struggles were mounting, he would be the last guy off the ice of practice. He'd be coming in with Connor, you know, yeah. He was first on the ice, last yeah. off, trying to get things right. Yeah. And hopefully he can use this now as an opportunity to be like, all right, let me go dominate again in the AHL, score a couple goals, and yeah. be, all right, got the monkey off my back and, and feel better. Because as we were talking about earlier with the hesitation and the overthinking, watching 27 from our purchase, you could see it. Totally. You could see the processing happening for him instead of just go. Be fast. Take, you know, we would get frustrated with him. There were many times this year where it looked like he had a step on a defenseman and he would kind of curl off and try to make a pass. Whereas last year he would drive that net and get the shot. And that, that's all up here. For sure. And, and that's the hard, like you'd see him and, and we, I've been there. I've done it. Your pucks are blowing off your stick and you don't know why, right? And it's it just, it, it's funny when you're not in sync with body and mind that it just, it doesn't come out the right way, the product that you're trying to pr- produce. So, I'm th- I'm excited for him that he's going to go down there and have the right attitude and be the player that he w- needs and wants to be and and we'll welcome him back here with open arms obviously because he's he's a really big part of what we're trying to do here and I have no doubts he can be that player for our, our club and our organization. Uh, I think my favorite thing of covering Luke Richardson on a daily basis is his willingness and love for getting granular, even with us explaining plays and breaking it down more so not explaining the how but the why and how important the why is when you're explaining these things. And, and I always think if he's doing that for us, yeah. I can't imagine what, how it is in the room. How important is that to have that coach so detail-oriented for all the young players come through? I'm sure it helps the veterans too, but yeah. for a guy like Lucas Reichel and then some of these rookies who are going to be coming in over the next two, three, four seasons, how important is that? That's huge. I think that's one thing Luke is so good at is he cares, and he cares tremendously about the players he has. And he shows that in his conversations with you and explaining, um, you know, maybe the situation at the time or, or what he wants from you. So um, I think he's done a great job in that aspect of, of really bringing our young players along. And, and whether it's tough love or, or a, a, you know, arm around their back, it's he knows the right time and, and when to push and when to pull back. And, um, and I think it's really made him really respected in our room. And he's gone, you know, through a ton of life experiences, obviously, um, and he's also played the game for a really long time. So I think he's seen so much and has so much to offer in those instances. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky to have a guy like that at the helm that, that understands that. So um, I think all the guys are going to benefit from the conversations that he's going to have with them and, and the direction he's trying to push us and, and understanding there is a, you know, there's a responsibility too that, that you have as a, a Chicago Blackhawk on this team. And if you fall below it, he's going to let you know. And if you're doing a great job, he's also going to let you know. It seems like I think Korchinski the other night was a good example where, what, like two or three shifts into the second, 
they decided to sit him for the rest of the period, let him get the message, talk to Kevin Dean, whatever, Mm -hmm. and then right back at it for the third period. So it's a consequence without it being like a doghouse or a punishment or making an example of somebody. It's a teaching moment. And it's, it seems like that's how Luke looks at things. And depending on, like you said, the other game, when we had you on post game, like he blasted you guys for that game. Yeah. That's not something he goes to all the time, right? Yeah. So it, I think it, it, that's probably, I would think that that's a little more effective to a player. When the outburst happens, you're like, whoa, that was, that, that was meaningful, as opposed to you're just hearing it all the time. There's other coaches in the league who have made a career of that, you know. For sure. <laughs> Got one coming in tomorrow. <laughs> Torts, I didn't him. want to say it, but <laughs> I love him. Though. Um, but I also love that too, because I think there's a fire that comes with torts that, that motivates you too. Right. And, and you know, he's never going to let you off the hook. He's never going to be like, I'll let that one. No, I'm, I'm acknowledging it. So I think Luke does a really good job though, of, of using those bullets when it matters. And, you know, you really carry, it carries weight and, and especially with our group, who's still, you know, let's be honest, it's a fragile year in a lot of ways where there's not a lot of winning. There's not a lot, like, you could be yelling every day if you really want to, but what is that really going to accomplish other than just a really toxic atmosphere? And no one likes losing, absolutely not, but there's a way to, to show that with teaching as well and, and also, you know, building guys up to make them feel like, no, you, this is accomplishable and we can do this. And, um, and I think he has a really good balance of that and understanding when he needs to push and, and when we need a, a kick in, the, kick in the butt or slap in the head a little bit just to get going. So, um, and then also when to coddle and and hey, this is why I got upset with you. And this is what I want you to do, and he redirects you back into what what is you know, important and kind of you know you get the message and you go. So that you know it happened with Corge. It happens with everybody at certain points, and um, I think you appreciate the the honesty and the opportunity after. We've got some fun to do with you ahead in a few minutes. Oh here. yeah, but, maybe. Uh, I checked the roster, and you are the one guy on the team that played against Chris Chelios. Yeah. And they're retiring his number uh, yeah. on Sunday. What do you recall about playing against him? What was it like? Uh, he was in Atlanta, so I think he was on his way out. He was, I think he was cruising at that point. I remember him being super tan. <laughs> that has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but, but, I mean, he's a legend, so it was actually really cool for me and – you know, even I think on the ice, or I think he had a moment where he's like, "I remember playing with, against your dad," and I was like, "Yeah, I remember watching you. I kind of hated you, but uh, but as I've gotten to know him here, I mean, he's such a, a good man and such an ambassador for our club and um, what he's meant to to Chicago. So I'm thrilled for him and his family. Uh, you know, he deserves this honor, and I think it'll be a really special night for him, and obviously, and uh, and just something that is well deserved, and and you know, gets a chance for the whole city to really show how much they appreciate what he did in this club, and and what he meant to this team, and um, yeah, he'll be a, you know a legend forever. We'll get ready for, I mean, number of retirements always bring out the stars, but Chelios's circle of friends oh, is mm-hmm. like. I guarantee you Eddie yeah. Vedder is going to be there. That's awesome. There, you have to teach Connor who Pearl Jam is. Yeah. I'm I'm more, I think Sunday. I'm more excited. I think I'm more excited for Eddie Vedder than I am for anybody that, else. That, that was the one. That was like the most disappointing thing I heard in training camp when you said like he never heard of Pearl Jam. I was like, oh, no. That was the worst. <laughs> no. I was so pissed. Oh, That's one of my favorite I was like, I, 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 trade him. Trade him. Yeah. Get him out of here. Uh, <laughs> Chelios is the one guy, though, of like, that I still get starstruck around. Like, yeah. Like Connor McDavid could walk by in the hallway or anything. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then Chelios, I'm like, that's effing Chris Chelios. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was my guy. He was right there oh, walking out yeah. today too, and still tan. It's cool. They have that like aura about it. Like I find some guys have that when they like, you know, even Sid has that. Like, well, there's just a uh, you've built them up in your head. So when you meet them, there's just yeah, there's just like they have this little shine around them a little bit. And Chris is like that. A lot of the old. I grew up in that era of players, so. When I see a lot of those guys, I get pretty excited. And, you know, I remember having them, dreaming about being them or having them as hockey cards or whatever it was. So, and we played NHL 94 the other day. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but that was pretty funny. We had that little, some Were of the guys that? literally, we had a thing. <laughs> and that's what the guy said. They're like, are you in this play? I'm like, no. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty funny, though, that they didn't even know how to turn on Sega Genesis. Some of the guys had no idea oh, how to turn I'm, it on. I that don't, was, I don't. That you don't have that doesn't shock me at all. Oh yeah, I was yeah. like, oh god, I was like sad. I was the only one. I was like, start. Yeah, it was yeah. This yeah. Button, it's the button that says it's, power. Yeah, it's it's not power difficult. and then start. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Yeah, but yeah. some guys had a tough time. So who? Yeah. So I saw a thing the other day when they were doing the Yarmir Yager 
retirement that he played with like it's like thirty six percent of the players that ever played in the NHL. Oh That's God. insane. Like <laughs> yeah. Chelios has got to be up there though. Yeah, he's, he's sure. imagine, yeah. More. He's he yeah. played more games. How many yeah. seasons did he play? I don't even know. Twenty six was it? Yeah, it was his like, career something, began something in the mid eighties and ended yeah. in twenty ten. So I mean. That's unbelievable. That's great. We we uh, Yager Yager's another one of those guys because we did a, a remote show from a, a sports memorabilia convention in Heart Rosemont in the summer, yeah. and Yager was right next to us, and like we went over and, and like even that I'm like that's fucking Yarmer Yager. <laughs> yeah. like, that guy, that's yeah. another guy that has that aura, and he looks like yeah. man, like hey, what are you doing in October? You want to help? Like you could probably still put up twenty. It's like, crazy. I was like, I met Mario, and that was like that. Peter Forsberg too was the same. Yeah, there's all those guys that just, yeah, they were special. Twenty seven seasons for Chelios. Unreal. His if last you were counting, twenty ten, twenty oh nine, oh ten against him for a little while. Seven games. That was, that, was that, was that, <laughs> that was that historic Thrashers run. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> so where was he in two thousand seven? Detroit. Uh, he was in Detroit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, he pl- actually he played in the uh, Winter Classic. Yeah. Uh, that's that the insane. Hawks were that's in. Well, that, that's, that's, that's one barely, shift. Well, barely one played. Shift. Babcock yeah. put him out for one was shift. That Babcock? Mm-hmm. And then he knew he wasn't going to play the rest of the game. So he was having his son bring him beers on the bench the rest of the <laughs> day because he knew he wasn't going to play. Only Chelly was that. Only Chelly. That. Get Only away Chelly. With that. That's unreal. <laughs> All right. We know you're short on time, and Steven has been working on this for a while. All right, let's we see. have a lot of people chiming in saying there's a lot of people that look like Nick Felino. Have you heard? Oh, no. Have you heard? Has anyone ever said you look like X famous person? Yeah. Who have you heard? Philadelphia Eagles coach. Oh, I get yeah, that a lot. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, that's a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. <laughs> oh, shoot. So we're going to do a little segment here on Nick Foligno lookalikes. <laughs> uh, and Nick... Uh, I'm kind of nervous Sirianni's about leading yeah, off Yeah, see, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if I had hair like that, oh man! Well, like my like wife would like be that. Happy. <laughs> like my, that. Look at that. That's a handsome guy right there. <laughs> yeah, separate, <laughs> separated at birth. Kind of, for sure. Kind of. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe he doesn't have hair, and you do. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, that's that's brutal. Like, how do you Looks turn? like a conehead. Sirianni turned it in Jake Gyllenhaal somehow <laughs> yeah. in that transition. That was weird. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I like that. Have you ever heard uh, former Bears coach Matt Nagy as a lookalike? No. How? What do you, What do you think about this one? You have to grade it A through F. What are you giving this one? <laughs> I mean, I'll give it like a D. <laughs> Does no the offense. visor help at all? Little, maybe a little, <laughs> little bit better. Actually, my beard is a little bit darker, you know? Like, it just, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think, think it's you're, more you're a better football play caller, too. I think yeah. it's more the ball. <laughs> trust, trust me, Nick, you are far more beloved than Matt Nagy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one more football one. Sure Another former guy, bear though. here. We got former offensive lineman Kyle Long. I have heard that one, actually. You have. Handsome guy, too. I want to meet him. I think he still hangs around yeah, he's Chicago. Around. Yeah, I would love to meet that guy. He's, he's awesome. I th- I threw I threw Aaron Rodgers in there, but I got that once in a casino. Yeah, when just, I had hair and my beard was a little bit. Just lean into it, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I did. Yeah, I was like, yeah you absolutely. Need, yeah. You need yeah. crystals yeah. and uh, mushrooms, and that'll, <laughs> that'll <laughs> guide your journey. I'm gonna go man. do ayahuasca. Would you like to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, this was a Greg suggestion here, actually. Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, is this the oh, UFC oh, guy? No, no, no. He's a, he's a he's WWE, WWE guy. guy. Oh, I like but, him. Yeah. You got to you got to grow up. Yeah, the nose is pretty well close. I think too. Does this help a little bit? Yeah, oh, there you go. Perfect. See? It's like looking in a mirror. Same body too. Hey, actually, playoff so, yeah, beard. Playoff beard in a few years, maybe. There's a UFC guy that somebody just sent me a text. Uh, they're like, I didn't know you were fighting in UFC, but I don't know who the guy is. Uh, it was this Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, I, I, it was I, a didn't, side I didn't send you Alexander that Alexander Volkanovsky. I bet there it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, that, that name just rolls right off. The yeah. Top. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Who, I, I got it. I got one more for you here. Now, this one I didn't really see, but I've seen in our chat several times. So I, I've heard you look like his, you guys could be cousins maybe. What do you think about this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at that guy. <laughs> oh, man. 100%. You had to pick that picture? Separated yeah, I did, I did creep your face. That looks like you were on a couple days. That's what I was doing that last is, night at 2 a.m. That is... Uh, this is the moment Mario makes his Facebook profile. That is like Make him bald. Make that him bald. Is two... <laughs> yes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. We team. are very similar. You know what, though? It's good to it's know... Italian in us, It's you know? good to know that you can pull off bald. Are you telling me my hair is falling? No, off? I'm just saying it's good to know when the time, if and when the time comes, that you yeah. can pull it off. You should have seen Maybe. when I first shaved my head, though. Like I, I, I so I tell the story. It's kind of embarrassing, but we're we're coming off the plane, 
And, you know, like our media people, they take pictures of you coming off the plane. Well, there's always windy. Yeah. And my hair was like kingpin. Like, yeah, the Bill Murray. <laughs> like flying. And, and I, I, he said, he's like, the guy taking the picture, like, looked, they started laughing. I'm like, show me that picture right now. He shows me. I'm like, that's it. I get home. That next day, I'm like, Janelle, we're shaving my head. She's like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm like, we're shaving my head. She's like shaking with the, the trimmers. And oh, no. she goes over and she's like, because she's like, this could go real bad. Like, what if your head isn't a good shape? Right, like, this yeah. could be bad. And then she, I could see her eyes. She was like, oh, it's it's not bad. And I'm it like, oh, out. thank God. <laughs> this could have been really, really bad. But it's, I have to keep the beard. If I don't have the beard, it's, ooh, it's yeah. not good. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. It doesn't look good. I, I shaved the beard uh, accidentally. I made a mistake, so I had to shave it off. And my wife's like... Yeah, just don't. You don't have to do that she again. She said that to me, yeah, too. I, I don't like that. Like, oh, thank just you. your face is <laughs> yeah. not great. Well, and you, you, you bet the beard, too, last yeah, year. I did bet the bet, beard, yes. yes. What was my bet? That the you Hawks were, you were the finished? only one that had faith in last year's Hawks team. He said if the he thought the Hawks would finish outside of the bottom, outside three. Of the bottom three in the standings. I thought they were too year. good. And he was going to he'd shave his beard. if And, of course, I did. they, fi- they didn't. And on the air, we had him shave his beard. And yeah. uh, it's not good. That's no a good fan. It. That's a good fan, though. I appreciate that. I guess. It uh, out. That it third spot out. worked out well. It worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was all worth it. All right, Nick. We're going to let you go. Thank you, we guys. We know you've got things to do. Uh, thanks for being with us. Thank and we'll you. We'll figure out when you're going to be on next, but uh, you're always welcome. Thank you. The post-game thing was a lot of fun, too. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, again. That was great. Yeah, after sure. a win, though, right? Well, that's yes. Yes, for that's sure. your department, that's, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, you All I that. smell is bacon, though. I'm dying. Yeah, go get some. Go meet Charlie get some on the way out. Get some bacon on the way out. I think it's garlic jalapeno. Oh, got baby. Stuff, right? yeah. Speaking yeah, of there's language. It's all good. Awesome. All, all right, Nick. Guys. Thanks, man. Right, we appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thanks, Nick. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you yes. soon. Yeah. And we want to remind everybody and welcome our new partners at Coors Light. Very, very excited about this partnership because, you know, when we're sweating a uh, Hawks game, win or lose, it's stressful watching these games, and we're committed. We want them to do well, and sometimes it helps you chill out when you pop a nice cold Coors Light, and it works at home, too. Hanging out with buddies, hanging out with your friends, just uh, crack open a nice cold silver bullet, and you're going to have a great time. I like it because I can drink a couple and not feel super full, keep the night going, feeling positive, feeling good. Yeah. You're, you're, it's a great Your great analysis for improves, too. The more you drink, the better your I also lose my filter out. a little bit, which is maybe not great. Yeah. But that's, I was thinking <laughs> driving home last night, like... Did I say anything I need to apologize for today at practice? <laughs> no. Nope. Nah, the guy that's sore, bitch, doesn't need an apology. <laughs> uh, but, man, it is uh, Coors Light for me. It's just the perfect beer. When those mountains are blue, you know it's cold. It is awesome. And it's cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. When it's time to chill, open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rocky Mountain Mountains, not baseball team. And when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered Ooh. straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Visit that link, CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? Yes. Well, if you are... We've got some great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Ram in Fox Lake is celebrating the President's Day sales event all month long. And you know what that means? I'm going to tell you. You'll be able to shop presidential savings on their wide selection of inventory for a limited time. Get 20% off MSRP on all remaining to 2023 Jeep Gladiator models, Russell Crowe's favorite car. You like Gladiator, Gladiator models? <laughs> you like Gladiator models, Billy? <laughs> They're number one for all new vehicle quality among mid-sized trucks, says J.D. Power. And listen to that, J.D. Power fella. He knows, he knows what stuff. he's talking yeah. about. And that's not all. Shop their last call and select Dodge Challenger and Charger models. Dodge is the most powerful muscle car brand, so if you don't want to miss out on their last call with over 20 Dodge muscle cars to choose from. At Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, Ram. Ram you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you expect thanks to Ray's Price Promise. Don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Ram makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever. And that's not all. Just for listening, you can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service. But you have to schedule before February 29th. We gave you a whole extra day (laughs) just for you and your free oil change. Yes. So... 
If you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, 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 because they're the only team that we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake, or for more information, head over to RayCDJR.com, serving the community since 1963. You need to give Ray a call. My car, yeah. is, my car is making noises. It's not good it's noises? A little, not, not good noises, and it's a pretty old car, too. So. It's time to upgrade to a Gladiator. Carm Might was need just to over get there. He just got a Chevy Trax. Who was that? Carm. Carm? Yeah, just nice. a few days ago. Chevy Trax. Had a good, good deal car. on it, so yeah. maybe that's about to go. That's Trax. Ah. It sure does. Might uh, might be in the market for, what was that? The the Dodge Charger Scat. Red Eye Hellcat yeah. uh, Scat Pack. $730,000 <laughs> muscle. Hey, you know what? What's you, what you Right now, hey, Ray's got a deal on we, it. We got that Coors Light money now. You can <laughs> That's go get true. So. That's right. That's true. Uh, yes. Uh, boy, it's always, anytime I talk to Nick, I feel better about stuff. Yeah. Just life in general. Yeah. I'm, Not just hockey. I'm he's ready, got, I'm he's ready got to that, go uh, like, accomplish stuff. Today. Yeah. Let's go run through a wall. That sounds fun. But I, I liked what he had to say about Reichel, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's just try to be encouraging and that made, you know, made sure to make him understand that, hey, man, we're here for you. We support you. Go yeah. go get it and you'll be back soon. You know, it's good to hear. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, I, I feel like, you know, that's what you want to hear from, you know, the the uh, mindset, you know, coming from, from teammates and stuff, you know, show that you have a, a belief in, in the guys around you. Um and and be able to especially for a, a young player like Reichel, you know be able to be like hey like everyone recognizes like your skill level and stuff like as nick was saying like he didn't see him play last year but in training camp he was impressed by as we all were the way Reichel was playing at the start of the year so you know you, he even a guy who wasn't here for when Reichel was playing well saw how good he could be so i mean it's 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 a testament to uh you know the 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 rest of the team that's you know, investing in Reichel and saying like, "Hey, man, like, you you can you can do this. You can f- you know figure it out and do it." So, uh, you know, it's 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 good to see from that from the the team standpoint. And you know, I I think we all are in agreement that this team is better if Lucas Reichel is a good part of it. Um, so he's just got an opportunity now to try and try and figure things out in Rockford. Yeah, I mean, that's how he has to look at it as an opportunity to get better, to get right. It's. I don't think it's long term. I don't think it's you know they just want him to get there. Yeah. We were in the locker room today. His locker stall still there. They didn't take down his nameplate, so that's, that's a good <laughs> sign. Um, you know they might be taking down another one. Uh, yeah, the Zach Sanford Zach was placed Sanford. on waivers today. So uh, we hardly knew ye Zach Sanford, but. Uh, Actually, we did. Well, yeah. <laughs> Him and Jacob Magna, they uh, yeah, they got confused. Well, now I know it's Jacob Magna. Yeah, that'll be yeah, they, the only they, one they are very similar <laughs> in appearance. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm assuming he'll be uh, headed to to Rockford as well if he clears waivers. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was a waiver claim to begin with, so who knows? That's maybe, true. maybe a team thinks that he's you know. He's Has a, anyone else been recently decimated by uh, injuries? I mean, he's a guy that's a Stanley Cup winner with the Blues. I mean, he scored a goal in the uh, Stanley Cup final that year. So maybe yeah. there's a a playoff team that wants that depth guy and makes a claim. But we'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna think he's going to Rockford. That's a logical yeah, guess. I that's, yeah. so. that's a safe wager. Uh, I'm going to throw Steven a curveball here. Ooh. Um, I'm going to throw it back. I just saw your Slack message. Yeah, it's in the Slack. What happened? Uh, it is we, not ready. It's not ready? Can yeah. we get it ready? I can get it ready. <laughs> okay, get let's it get ready. it ready. Get it ready, Steven. Uh, we're gonna play, we were going to play Luke Richardson for you, <laughs> but I think we, we only have a few minutes left, and I think Connor Bedard was really interesting today. Had a lot of had some good stuff to say about uh, what happened last night with Spencer Martin mm-hmm. and what he's looking forward to. I know it's a little couple games ahead, and he made sure to – Point that out, but the but Patrick Kane returning to town. Everyone's looking ahead. Doesn't matter. So that was our first time to really scrum it up with him since he's come back from injury, right? Uh, I practice. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. returning yeah. practice. Yeah. Well, and he, t- and he talked after the post games, but yeah, yeah. yeah. as a, as a practice with everyone in attendance. Yeah, one of the first yeah. Times. The practice chats are better because you can kind of go all over the place. Where if like post game, you're pretty much like talk about the game. Talk about the game. Yeah. Where yeah. now, like when you get them at a morning skate or you get them after practice, you can you know, wander a little bit more in the conversation. Well, we talked about it with Nick, and I, I we've all noticed since his return, there is a bit of an attitude there, a good yeah. one, where he's like, F you, I'm Connor F and Bedard. I love it. And it's, <laughs> I can't, like, I cannot wait to see the rest of this kid's career. And let's take it slow, right? Like, because the dynasty flew by, 
So right, it's not right. like Connor Bedard's career it's, fly by, but it's, man. Let's enjoy it, yeah. When you think like two, three, four years down the road when he's fully mm. realized in his prime, his game is fully rounded out, and he's, and he's 22, around him. and he's, he's got, 23. He's, yeah, he's got some teammates that can play oh at that God. level too. Yeah, it's crazy. Like As Nick was saying, like seeing him come back and he's just like, he knows that he can elevate his game in the NHL, not just like survive, but also thrive now in the NHL. Like, I mean, what, six points in, in three games since yeah. returning? Like, that, like, Should good, good luck, rest of the league. Yeah. And, yeah, one thing that it's a hockey culture thing, and it, Connor is as old school a hockey guy as there is. Like, he's very aware of like the code and yeah. the way things are supposed to be. So, I think there was a little bit of him early in the season of being like, I'm still the rookie. I have to earn my way here. I have to, no. After that injury, he's like, no, that time's over. Yeah. Now it is time to me to fully this, assert myself. This is my team. Yeah. Jump and, on if you want. And look, Get there's no one in that don't. room that's like, no, no, you can't. Right. There, I mean, Nick Foligno is the leader of that team. He's he's basically saying, kid, take it. Yeah. It yeah. is here for the taking. Well, well, it is and, open for you here. Well, and Connor had 14 games to watch this team without him, and he was seeing the same team we were seeing, 1.2 goals per game. So I think if 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 he needed that bird's eye view to kind of take things in, he could see, oh, they need me to be me. Like <laughs> yeah. it's 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 not I need to help this team uh, by you know making passes and and trying to facilitate offense and fitting into the system. Like no, I need to go out there and take over games, and he's been doing it. Yeah, he's he's been outstanding. He's been outstanding. It's it's uh, it just makes the game so much more watchable. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's just so weird how like you get those like stretches. Like last night, it was like, oh, first period, no shots on goal. Oh, second period, still no shots on yeah. goal. And then for like se- seven minutes of that game, it was nothing but counter Yeah, yeah. He was, but and Nick said this too about him and Kurishev. Like they're starting to work give and goes and those sort yeah. of things together. They've got that chemistry now where. Yeah, he was not putting shots on that, but he was making things happen. Like, mm-hmm. passes on the money, kind of creating something out of nothing. I know we all want to see him shoot as much as possible, but if he's setting up Felino and Kourish for goals, great. That's great, too. Well, and yeah, and he, and he set up the, the goal for Tyler Johnson as well. You know, Johnson went to the front of the net, and he, and he was able to put a puck there and, and get the redirection. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not just he has to score 75 goals. Like, he's going he's gonna to create for other other guys too all right why don't we hear from Connor Bedard this is after practice today uh here he is number 98 so you had three points in in that game uh, you take solace of that even though you know you had the loss um I don't know I mean it was a pretty frustrating game I think uh I mean you're never happy after a loss and um obviously points are nice but um you know I think we had to improve on, especially in the first two periods. That the third we came out and um, uh, we weren't bad. We were holding on to pucks more and stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, obviously you're not happy with that, but um, getting points in the moment is always nice. But you look back and, and see where you could have been better, and um, you know, there's a lot of areas for me. So yeah. I mean, man, I mean anything to you, but uh, you know, in the rec- uh, franchise, you pass it. The old check for most multi-point games by an 18 year old. Uh, yeah, it's cool, I guess. Um, you know, it's not something you're you're thinking about too much, but um, you know when you hear yourself with with names like that, it's always always cool. There's a lot of special <laughs> players and people that have came to this organization, so um, kind of my name beside his in, in any ways is cool for sure. It's up these disallowed goals. <laughs> yeah, it's not say. Eh? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, Toronto doesn't like me too much, but no, I mean it's uh, it's out of out of my control and. Obviously, you try not to get, get frustrated by it. You know, it was nice to kind of get one um, after anyway to kind of cancel it out. But, um, you yeah, know, there's been, been a couple for sure. So hopefully we, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen, but we'll see. Has you met Spencer Martin before, or was there anything behind that? Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. It's hockey, and uh, I, don't, I don't think it was, it was anything too, too meaningful or, or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it was funny. Does that get you going, though, a little bit? I mean, just the brush by at the end of the second period? Um. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm always, you know, excited to play and stuff, but I think, uh, you know, just how the game was going, I was kind of trying to be a little more physical or whatever and kind of, I guess, got in his face a little bit there. So he didn't like it, which is which is fair. I don't, you know, I don't think either of us are waking up and 
you know, caring too much about it. But, uh, yeah, it's just not a big deal at all. What about after the goal gets waved off? I know you're always looking to score, but a little more eager to, to get it done after that? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're always, you're always wanting to score. So, um, you know, it was nice. Obviously, Kershey gave me gave me a gift there. So, um, you know, it was nice to kind of, you know, erase the, the disallowed one, I guess. Did it help you? When you were make, what you were able to do to help a com- possible comeback for this team after being down as much as you were in the third, quarter, third period? Um, I think just our whole team started playing a lot better um, in the third. Um, you know, I mean, they're they're a really good team. They're they're fast. They're hard to play against. And um, you know, I think once we kind of settled in in the third, I thought we played pretty well. And um, you know, maybe if we get you know, one more late and then have a chance there. But um, you know, obviously, it's frustrating with the with the results though. Lucas said it looks like you're initiating the physical play a little bit more since you came back. Is that something you're mindfully doing or just something that you were going to work on over time? Is it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, I was, you're always trying to do it. I think it gets, gets, gets the end of the game, or at least for myself. Um, you know, I'm not going to blow anyone up by any means, but, um, you know, maybe a bump here and there. And um, I think it really gets you into it, gets you kind of firing. So, um, you know, I think that's good for me and even on the four track trying to steal pucks or, or whatever and I think that's a really good way to create offense. See a lot of guys like I mean Matthews for example, just the way he steals pucks and um, uses his body and he's not blowing guys up but body positioning and stuff so um, you know it definitely adds to your offensive I guess toolbox. Luke talked about when you return to the lineup things are ramping up in the NHL. Three teams you play this week are all in that kind of wild card discussion. Have, do you sense that you know the game's getting a little bit faster now as we get closer to playoff time? Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone wants to win win every game, but once it gets obviously closer to the end of the year, um, you know, everyone's fighting fighting for those points, and and so are we. I mean, obviously, it's you know, it doesn't matter where we are in the standings right now. It's, it's the NHL. We, we want to win games, and um, you know, every game we're we're doing everything everything we can to win and. Um, you know, so I think we have the same mindset as, as all those teams, but of course, you know, with it being the last 25, 30 games down the stretch here, the, the points are huge for everyone. Sure, sitting out was brutal for you, but do you feel like you were able to pick up anything about your game being forced to sit out that long? You might not have been able to, I don't know, learn about yourself or, or learn about your game. Um, I don't know. I mean, you never, never want to be out, uh, of course. So I never say that. But I think the biggest thing is just how much you miss it. Um, you know, obviously you're. You're fired up for every game, um, no matter what. But once you're you're out for a bit and you can't you can't go play, you can't go help your guys out. Um, you know it's frustrating and, and you just miss it so much. So um, you know I'm just really happy to be back. But um, you know if I wasn't out, I'd still be just excited for for all the games. Since you've been wearing a face shield, do you even notice that it's on when when you're playing? Uh, not really. No. I mean, you know I've wore it before briefly and. Uh, you know, I don't care too much. Obviously, you know, visor's nice, but um, you know, it doesn't really affect me too much. I don't mind. It would be a perfect time to pick a fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then uh, <laughs> probably, you know, feel a little more comfortable than uh, taking a punch to to the fishbowl than in the face. So, uh, but no, I don't think I'll be fighting anytime soon. <laughs> Sorry to look ahead a little bit, but with Sunday coming up and Patrick Kane coming back, do you? How much do you look forward to? Facing him yeah, yeah. Like you said, uh, we're not looking looking forward too much, but um, yeah, we got some games. But I'm I'm just pumped for the video trivia. I think it's gonna be pretty nasty. He had some <laughs> he had some sick highlights here. I've watched every one of his mixtapes probably a hundred times with this with this stuff. So um, you know, I'm pumped for that. And I think for him, it's gonna be a pretty special night. Obviously, with with Shelly getting the, the the jersey too is. Uh, it's going to be a cool night for sure, but uh, we got a lot of time until then, a lot of games that, that we're focused on, on right now, so kind of worry about that when it gets a little closer. You surprised his heartbreak, Sally, so popular 11 years after he started it? Uh, no, I mean, I think you kind of pioneer something, and, um, you know, it's pretty cool. So whenever someone does it, it's always traced back to him, which I think is, is pretty sweet. So um, he's had some he's had some cool Sally's, um, you know, in his years. So. Um, you know, he's, he's an icon in the game. He's someone that is going to be remembered forever, and, and he's still playing at such an elite level. And he's still like point per game and and buzzing on that on that team. So uh, I mean, I love watching him play. I've fallen following what he does um, for the last whatever 10, 20 years, my whole life. Um, not twenty, but you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. So he's uh, he's a fun guy to watch.
<laughs> did he just forget how old he is? I, I think he did forget how old he was, yes. Whoops. I've been watching him for 20 years. No, you haven't. That's not possible. Uh. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have a tasty surprise on set. Ooh. Ooh. What could it be? I don't know. Could it be what is making this office smell? It's, it's so intoxicating good. in here. Uh, you know, if you're if you get the aromas of bacon... Uh, everywhere in your office, it's probably going to stay in the floorboards. And for some people, that might be caused for changing the floorboards. Not here, but for some people, you might need to change <laughs> the floorboards up. And that's when you want to call Empire today. Uh, you could shop the best flooring out there with uh, Empire, a Chicago staple, of course. And with Empire, you get to shop uh, at home convenience, the right product for your needs, get quick and professional installation, and all do it with Empire's low price guarantee. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. So of course they do have copycats, but Empire cannot be beaten on quality service or speed. So competitors advertise low quality products that Empire simply will not carry. They promise they can't promise the lowest prices because anyone who is doing so is putting flooring in your home that they wouldn't put in theirs. Uh, and what's really cool about Empire is uh, you don't have to, you know, go through these long processes of looking at samples and, oh, would this take a sample home? And does this match my, you know, my wallpaper or what are all the, all, the, all that stuff? You can take a picture of the room that you want your new flooring in and through their virtual floor designer, you can see how that new floor will look just from uh, putting it onto that picture. It's an easy process. Just snap the picture, instantly see how the new floors look, and you can see what works, what won't work, and what's going to make your uh, place look the best with your new floors. So schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners uh, can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code CHGO. Uh, Restrictions do apply. See Empire Today slash CHGO for more details. Yes. And if you're heading out to join us uh, Sunday, Sunday for our takeover, for uh, Chris Chelios night slash the return of Patrick Kane, a couple things you should know. We're going to be meeting in the atrium around uh, 145, around Chelios Chili. Remember, Pat Foley hosts a forum at 215 it's in the atrium. Chelios and former teammates. Yes. You're going to want to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the ceremony itself is at 310. Mm-hmm. The puck drops at 5. So if you're coming with us at the game, we're going to be in the atrium by 2 o'clock at the very, very latest. Uh, we'll kind of gather around Chili's Chili and then uh, head up to our seats for the ceremony once that's over. But if you missed out and you want to make sure you catch the next CHGO event, it's a good time to become a diehard. Go to Absolutely. allchgo.com to learn all you need to know about becoming a diehard. You click that diehard tab at the top. That's how you become a diehard. And when you do that... Not only do you get a free shirt or hat upon sign up, you get twenty uh, percent off all of our merch at CHGO Locker, twenty percent off all of our takeoff, takeovers, events, tailgates, everything we do, everything we put on is discounted. So you sign up for your free shirt, you save twenty percent on another shirt and a twenty percent on an event, and it's more than paid for itself. Mm-hmm. You also get access to our weekly rebuild report that Greg and Mario do and my Blackhawks beat that I write every week, and all the great uh, diehard-only written content here at CHGO and access to our members-only Discord page, where this week alone we gave away tickets to a Rockford Icehogs game. Mm -hmm. We're going to give away one of those Corey Crawford uh, commemorative pucks very soon. So become a diehard today. We appreciate it when you do. That is allchgo.com, A-L-L-C-H-G-O.com. And we've got some new diehards we need to to welcome. Mm -hmm. We've got... Joe, Richard, Cody, Howard, Brendan, Riley, and Riley. Two different Rileys. Mm, two Rileys. And Clark, wow. James, and Kenny. Those are all of our new diehards over the last two days. So Welcome. keep them coming. It's about time Cody Welcome. from Yeah, CHL Cody has <laughs> became a diehard. Free ride's over. Company man in my <laughs> ass. Yeah. Speaking time. of free. That's very big of him. Yeah, uh, free bacon. Hey, hey there's, there's the bacon. There's, there's it's the Charlie. Man, the man, the myth, and the legend. There's the guy. Right. Charlie. The what do we got here? Raspberry. Ooh, that's raspberry basically a salad. All right, it's got fruit in it. Guys, it's I already tasted this one. Amazing. Daily, or as the boomers call it, raspberry, raspberry chipotle. <laughs> raspberry. Mm. While you guys are enjoying that, Evil Bill's put in, as he words it, a crap ton mm. of uh, bacon. You got to put here. that in the read, Charlie. That bacon comes in crap ton size. How much is a crap ton? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. That is really oh. good. Mm-hmm. 
Delightful. Evil Bills are going to love it. Any kind of Chipotle spice on anything? Yeah. I'm, I'm down for on bacon? Hell yeah. I'm telling you, we got in the elevator and we're like, Charlie's here. We just knew. Mm-hmm. I parked my car and I knew, I knew Charlie was here. <laughs> Nick Felino came in and said, whoa, it smells amazing in here. <laughs> um, did, uh, did Nick take any home? No. All right, well, have him order some. He can afford it. CharlieTheBaconGuy.com is where you get your bacon. Be like Evil Bills and get yourself a crap ton of bacon. Mm-hmm. Well, you ordered 13 packages. 13 wow. packages. Damn. That is a crap ton. That's a lot of packages. That's a snack. No? Okay. Let's let it go. <laughs> um, yeah, get your own at CharlieTheBaconGuy.com. I would have made a joke, but bacon was in my mouth. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. fair enough. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to wrap things up. We are back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Post-game mm-hmm. Hawks and Flyers. Remember, 6 30 puck drop tomorrow even though it's a home game it is a 6 30 puck drop Let's make that a regular thing i'm here for it <laughs> let's make that a regular is thing is it a local broadcast or it TNT? Was tnt tnt so Dynamite. they got the early tnt game yeah hey, how about that that's so nice boston and oilers i believe are the late game which will be delayed when mm. flyers blackhawks go into a 19 round shootout tomorrow. <laughs> ah yes yeah, speak it into existence Yep, it'll be fun. It's your game to, to, to stay for anyways. <laughs> That's fine. I get home earlier when I stay there as opposed to coming back here. Fair enough. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow after the 6.30 Hawks and Flyers game on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. We all silly like the mayor.